Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, Uwe St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind adjust the theme, crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East St. Augustine. As a research supercomputer scientist, my goal is to discover how to compute fastest and do so with the slowest processors or how to do more with less and how to create reality from science fiction. Parallel processing, the technology that enables the supercomputer to solve many problems at once, enabled me to solve 65,536 problems at once. In principle, your computer can do whatever my supercomputer can do. However, your computer that is powered by only one isolated processor takes 30,000 years to solve a grand challenge problem that my supercomputer that is powered by an ensemble of over 10 million processors takes only one day to solve. Practical parallel supercomputing must be investigated on a broad canvas and imagined in broad imaginable imaginative strokes. Practical parallel supercomputing only benefits humankind if and only if it is proven to solve the grand challenge problems. Practical parallel supercomputing is not for the faint of heart or for those locked within their own intellectual silos. As a research supercomputer scientist, my goal was not to barely invent new algebra and new calculus. My research goal was to project my new mathematics and project that new knowledge from the blackboard to the motherboard and across a new internet that is a new global network of 64 binary thousand processors and most importantly to project that new supercomputer into the real world where it helps my country of birth nigeria discover and recover otherwise elusive crude oil and natural gas or where it impacts the market trader in my ancestral hometown of onicha the fastest supercomputer attracts the toughest mathematical problems in physics in the manner a high mountain attracts the storms. The supercomputer is to mathematics what the Nile is to Egypt. Each is a lifeline. The supercomputer is an intellectual extension of the complex equations scribbled on the mathematician's blackboard. My goal was to invent a supercomputer out of the slowest processors. Inventing that supercomputer demanded that I become an athlete of the mind. Nine intense supercomputer circles are consumed solving the partial differential equation of calculus and physics. For that reason, practical parallel supercomputing may be defined as solving millions upon millions of initial boundary value problems at once. On the 4th of July, 1989, I announced my discovery of practical parallel supercomputing. The response from everybody was that I made a mistake. The first six copies of my 1057-page 
research report that was dated July 4, 1989, that described how I discovered practical parallel supercomputing we are thrown into the dustbin of the reviewers. I was mocked and I was warned that I was computing with science fiction, not with a new supercomputer. Everybody that said that I made a mistake was mistaken. Practical parallel supercomputing has withstood the test of time and is the vital technology that powers every supercomputer manufactured today. That experimental discovery that occurred on the 4th of July 1989 took the parallel supercomputer from a research and development project to the widespread commercialization that is called the modern computer. Parallel processing validated the modern computer. The amount of new computations that I discovered how to compute on the 4th of July 1989 was 64 binary thousand times what could be computed only one day earlier. After 1989, massively parallel processing became the standard technology that must be used in all supercomputers. Before 1989, the fastest 1,000 supercomputers in the world derived their supercomputing speeds from only one vector processing unit. After 1989, the fastest 1,000 supercomputers in the world derived their supercomputing speeds from up to 10.65 million central processing units that counterintuitively computed 10.65 million things at once instead of intuitively computing only one thing at a time. My 1989 paradigm shift from computing only one thing at a time to computing 65,536 things at once opened the door to computing 10.65 million things at once. A future world without the parallel supercomputing, supercomputer, could be a world without the computer of the future. If parallel supercomputing is subtracted from human knowledge, nearly every computer, all supercomputers, and the internet itself will shut down. Parallel supercomputing is not a new knowledge that was created. Parallel supercomputing exists theoretically and a priori and existed as a technique that was uncovered for computing faster. I discovered practical parallel supercomputing when I parallel processed across my new internet that was a new global network of 65,536 tightly coupled commodity of the shelf processors that shared nothing between each other and that were equal distances apart from each other. I turned science fiction to reality by discovering how to parallel compute and how to do so sight unseen. I was in the news back in 1989 because I was the first person to solve a grand challenge problem and solve it by massively parallel computing it. I achieved that supercomputer breakthrough and did so at a time all my 64 binary thousand processors were expected to forever remain silent. Parallel supercomputing is an invention because computers and supercomputers 
are now parallel processing. Thank you. I'm Philip M. Agale. Thank you very much. Thank you. Insightful and brilliant lecture.